can't get that. Can't get that. Good morning, and welcome to Our Lady of Africa Parish. Today, our Parish parents will take up a second collection to extend our help to the families and individuals who have come to Chicago seeking legal asylum in our nation. We open our hearts to our sisters and brothers in this special hour of their need. It is for the 3,500 plus asylum seekers, migrants, and refugees who have come to Chicago since August. Catholic Charities is caring for many of the refugees with food, clothing, and shelter. Please consider a donation to this second collection. Jesus came to restore paradise and everlasting life for us. The ultimate proof of the resurrection is the Lord Jesus and his victory over death when he rose from the tomb. The Holy Spirit reveals to us the eternal truths of God's enduring love and the abundant life he desires to share with us for all eternity. Please stand and welcome our ministerial team for today's Holy Mass and join us in our gathering song on Eagle's Wings, found on number 5585 in Lee King God.
Scott. So you think you want to make sure your last name, so we stick with Father Scott. And I'm committed to remembering the order of features. And they work in our provincial office. Um, welcome to Hilson. Uh, Dominican like your own sisters, Sister Mary and Sister Joy, or St. Martin of Horus. You've got a statue over there. It's the same order. So you're right at home here. Uh, since I work in our office, and we don't have a regular church on Sunday. So I was so happy that uh, your pastor had to go away and get you a chance to job. So we have uh, some challenging readings today. There's lots of violence. Um, not like our world where there's no violence at all, right? No, our readings kind of reflect that darker side of reality today. But it's good that we reflect on that now and then because it is the world we live in. Right? Yeah. And we need to be strengthened to live in this world. Yeah. And truth be told, sometimes we ourselves contribute to that dark side of violence. And we need to be given the greatest to be prepared for that as well. So it, it's with all of that that the reality of the struggles that we live in and our hope to rise above it. That we bring all of that this morning. Ask God for his love and mercy.
Almighty and merciful God, graciously keep us from all adversity, so that unhindered in mind and body, we may pursue in the heart to things that are yours. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God. A reading from the second book of Maccabees. It happened that seven brothers with their mother were arrested and tortured with whips and scourges by the king to force them to eat pork in violation of God's law. One of the brothers, speaking for the others, said, what do you expect to achieve by questioning us? We are ready to die rather than transgress the laws of our ancestors. At the point of death, he said, you are first fiend. You are depriving us of this present life. But the king of the world will raise us up to live again forever. It is for his laws that we are guided. After him, the third summoned their crew's fort. He put out his tongue at once when told to do so, and bravely held out his hands as he spoke these noble words. It was from heaven that I received thee. For the sake of his laws, I disdain them. From him, I hope to receive them again. Even the king and his attendants marveled at the young man's courage because he regarded his sufferings as nothing. After he had died, they tortured and maltreated the fourth brother in the same way. When he was near death, he said, It is my choice to die at the hands of men with the hope God gives of being raised up by him. But for you, there will be no resurrection to life. The word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. Brothers and sisters, may our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through his grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen in every good deed and word. Finally, brothers and sisters, pray for us so that the word of the Lord may speak forth and be glorified as it did among you, and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people, for not all have faith. But the Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you and the Lord that what we instruct you, you are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. The word of the Lord. Some Sadducees, those who did 
denied that there is a resurrection, came forward and put this question to Jesus, saying, Teacher, Moses wrote for us, if someone's brother dies, leaving a wife but no child, his brother must take the wife and raise up descendants for his brother. Now there were seven brothers. The first married a woman, but died childless. Then the second and the third married her, and likewise all the seven died childless. Finally, the woman also died. Now at the resurrection, whose wife will that woman be? For all seven had been married to her. Jesus said to them, the children of this age marry and remarry, but those who are deemed worthy to attain to the coming age and to the resurrection of the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. They can no longer die, for they are like angels, and they are the children of God, because they are the ones who will rise. That the dead will rise, even Moses made known in the message about the bush, when he called out, Lord, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and he is not God of the dead, but of the living. For to him all are alive. The Gospel of the Lord. say, I died for my children to protect them, right? So let's start with that. Why would you die for your children? Well, I mean, it's helpless, especially when they're just this big and so helpless. They can't do nothing without your help. So to 
defenseless and they just steal your heart away. And you know at that point you do anything ever to help them. But you can't help them always and everywhere, right? I mean, you just can't protect them from everything. And we have to rely on, on a world that's a good enough place that they can grow up and have chances. And that's the way it is. So we give our life for them to give them that chance in this world. The potential for what might be of their lives, right? Is worth dying for. Our faith follows on that sort of thing. Because our faith is what opens up those possibilities for all of us. It's only with God's grace that this world can rise above the violence that it is admired in. It's God's grace that lets us lift up above that. It's God's word to us in our hearts that lets us know what to do to stand against this. And it's God's promise of a better world that gives us hope that we don't have to put up with this. Because the world will always tell you, look, just go on, there's nothing you can do, this is the way it is. You know what it said to the seven brothers, this is the way it is, you eat this pork, because I get to say so. And the first one stood up and said, no, you don't get to say so. You don't have that power that you think you have. Because there is an ultimate power that's far beyond you and much better. I'll give myself to that power. So then we get to the, the gospel. You think it's not nearly as violent, but there's an undertow of violence. The connection is seven brothers all die. But then there's this poor woman who's passed from one to the other, with apparently no city in it to raise up brothers for this dead guy. But that she'd have something to say about it if anybody asked her. But what is the, the lesson here that Jesus brings out? He says there's a world to come that's so far beyond this one. Where love is so boundless that you're not just tied to one person. There isn't this marriage in heaven. Now remember, he is saying that to the Sadducees, it says. These are the people that don't believe that there is a heaven. This our faith teaches one life and that's it. And these are the people who will eventually kill Jesus, have him killed, to shut him up. And he, in this parable, is in their face, saying, no, it's you that are wrong. Can't you see? God is so much bigger. God wants so much more for us. And there is this world coming where you don't have to make new people because we live forever. And it is glorious. So how are we to understand that? That marriage is just for this world. We say, till death do us part, right? My sister used to always joke about that with her husband. Oh, uh -uh, only till death. And then I am done with you. I'm going to eternity with you. And it's not what it is. You lose your spouse when you die. I think it's not. It's sort of the opposite. What happens is that relationship that you worked on is finally healed. Because it's tough here, right? It's here and there, and it's good, and it's bad, and it's challenging and blessed. But in heaven, that relationship grows and becomes just blessing. But it expands to have that kind of blessed relationship of giving yourself to someone else and receiving the gift of them. It expands for everyone. That you have that relationship with everyone in heaven. So it isn't that you lose a spouse, you gain a close relationship 
with everyone. And we've got all eternity to get it done. Well, why can't we do that here? We can't, right? It's hard enough with this one relationship, giving of your whole self and receiving the gift of the other person and all the hiccups and the and bad things in here that we're sharing and receiving, and, uh, and it takes a lifetime, right? To get to know someone, to pour yourself out completely and receive them and get to know them. So that's what marriage is for, these two people to grow into the depths of what a blessed human relationship can be, the goodness it can bring out of us. They spend their life working on it. On the other hand, we have another sacrament where I'm never going to get married, right? Missing out on something pretty good, I hear. <laughs> so why? Ah, oh, with this consecrated celibacy, the point of that is having no one to pour myself out to and for you to pour myself out to everyone. So you need me today, I am completely here. And then you got it, you set, I can move on to where I need it somewhere else. And it's a kind of love that, that tries to embrace the whole world. Because it doesn't have to specialize on one person. Now, none of us do this perfectly, right? <laughs> We're on this side of heaven. We're not there yet. But we have these two models that work together to get us to see a bigger vision of what might become in heaven. That we might love everyone and love everyone completely deeply with our whole self. We do it one way here. We all have different pieces of that here. But in heaven, that all grows together so that we can give ourselves fully to everyone and receive all that they are into ourselves. Glory to stay that be. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so what does that say about here? Here's tough. Here are days where there is violence that seems to prevail, but it doesn't have to last for it. Because God has this plan, and He's calling us to just do our part, take a stand for the goodness that we know will come one day, for what God wants for us. Do something that we can today stand for that goodness against darkness. And God will use that to help bring about the kingdom of God. He can use us in our good action. He can prop us up when we don't feel like well, I can't stick my hands up or get caught up. Maybe I can with God's help. Or I don't think I can forgive my spouse, not this time, not today, Maybe I can, with God's help. Because I see that one day, this will all make sense, one day it will all be healed. And so I'm willing, with that knowledge, today, to do a little more to help bring it about. To place me firmly on the side of hope, not on the side of hopelessness. To be encouraged that God is working this out and Maybe I can get on board, let in a little more hope into my own life, and therefore bring it into the, the world a little more. So I think, in the end, it's the responsorial psalm that we really have a real word of hope for today. What, what was that? Glory. Glory. When your glory appears. When your glory appears. My joy will be. My joy will be full. That will be a glorious day. Amen. Amen.
acceptable to God is your name, Father. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and 
gave the chance to his disciples say, take this, all of it, and drink from it. For this is the chance of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress, as we wait blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to the apostles, he said to you here, and I will not say you here, looking up at our sins, but on the day of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And with your spirit. We will share with each other the sign of that peace.
and let us pray. Nor is I this Savior in power, to give you thanks and beseech your mercy, to by the power of your spirit, the grace of integrity may endure in those your heavenly power has entered through Christ our Lord. Good afternoon, church. My name is Doug Stevens, a junior member of our Lady of Africa Parish Men's Coalition, and I am here to provide a brief announcement about this year's Breakfast with Sun. Our organization has hosted this event for over 20 years, and it exemplifies our mission to church, family, and to self. The date of the event is December the 4th, in order to accommodate the children from our Holy Angel School. The event will be held immediately following the 11.30 a.m. Mass downstairs in the Palmer Clemens Hall, Hall of Bee Hall, and is open to all children, infant to 15 years of age. To ensure gifts are all, that they are gifts for all children planning to attend, please contact the rectory during business hours and leave the name, age, and the gender of each child attending. Or you can sign up in the non-text of the real church. This information must be received no later than November the 20th. Anyone wishing to donate unwrapped toys can place them in the marked basket in the non-text also located in the real church. For anyone donating cash, checks, or gift cards should contact the rectory and make arrangements for them to be given to a member of the men's coalition. The deadline to get to this is also November the 20th. Thank you in advance for your assistance in making this another successful event for our children. And also, come join the Men's Coalition of Our Lady of Africa Parish for the cleanup day. Holy Angel School Line, 750 East 40th Street, Saturday, November the 12th, from 9 a.m. to noon. Volunteers are solely needed. Okay, male, female, it doesn't 
matter. Please come out and help us clean the church. And last but not least, we need people that may be interested in security. We need security for the church. If you are interested in security, please see Mr. Silver Reed. He is in charge of our security. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you. 